kind of missed your marks with those spell usages, then you're not going to get the maximum value, maximum efficiency from your chorus. Whereas IG, they probably don't push as well at all, and they have that um, Shadow Shaman at the very least for push on their side. But that's another cooldown you have to care about for them. For IEG, it's more about getting big on the Storm and the Morphling. Now, if these two heroes find that farm, find that Snowball start, and both of these heroes are very, very much tempo heroes. If you can get the Morphling with good farm, if you can get that Storm with good farm, there is basically nearly no scalability from KG, at least on the same scale as IEG. See what they can pull off. KG Luminous. They went for a very early smoke. We're just going to be able to play some deep wards down for themselves. But they are going to run straight into Ollie on that Shadow Shaman if they're not careful. And they actually do rotate. Oh, oh my. JT. We saw this before. They're stacking up those, um, what do you even call them? Retaliate stacks. But still going to be okay. Thinking about going back up towards that T1. Though they are waiting for him if they do. He got four at the very least, so not the worst start for, for the Centaur with those stacks. It's looking spicy. Still, that smoke that came out of KG Luminous does not really pay off in the end. By the way, John, uh, it is going to be a mid DK. It's going to be a safe lane DP. Huh. Hmm. I don't ask I mean, me why. We, we have seen that before. Like, we, we have seen the safe lane DP before. In fact, I, I don't think we... I think we have seen this exact situation before a, a year ago, funny enough. And it is all right. I, I still kind of feel like... I mean, just how much can you get from your DK up against the Storm? Sure, level 1, without Breed Fire, you should be able to slow Emo down. But again, once he hits level 2... The overload, overload harass and the wave clear with that static remnant might be a bit too much for blood to deal with. At the very least, he can regen through that damage. But that's about it. Out. We're going to find out how well he does. Because the emote, definitely not to be underestimated on this Storm Spirit. He does love playing this hero. Still, at the top lane, it's going to be pretty hard for JT if he does wish to close the distance there onto Erika. Because he's always going to have that Spirit Siphon available up against that Centaur. It's not going to be the uh, the easiest of attempts on the DP's life if they do attempt it. It's like you go in for a Hoof Stomp, but that's pretty much it. As soon as the Spirit Siphon's there, you're pretty much dealing no damage. Yeah, it's really just one of those cases with that lane matchup. In fact, you have to consider the fact that this Oracle's there as well, so you have a massive amount of healing. Onto any, oh, but mainly on that DP, so it's a bit of a rough time to really pressure Erica right now. It's a, it's a lane that you have to accept that KGL will continuously be able to find farm. Look over to that bot lane as well. And the Morphling, not having the most amazing time quite yet. Jianfu being very annoying on that Sand King, and he's going to start harassing mm. him quite heavily. So the Strength Morph will be there, and he'll back off to safety. Ollie as well has to be rather careful not to get Burrow Strike right now, though. Looks like he will, and now the Split Earth follow-up will come out. He does have the Edict as well, and that's going to be First Blood going the way of KG Luminous. He was a bit greedy of that Charm to stick around, but Ollie thought he could get away with it. He does get punished rather hard for that. Yeah, that's an interesting play coming out from Ollie. Um, trying to trade. I guess he was pumping decent damage out. Again, maybe didn't expect that the level 2s just popped up on KG Luminous. And it's just that double stun coming out. You get that control onto a hero like Shadow Shaman. They can't really do too much. Dogfights? He just went for a deny on himself. But he actually ends up giving mm -hmm. the gold away to the Oracle. Yeah, that does tend to happen if you inflict enough damage. I think it does have a grace period where it still gives that gold to the enemy core. At the very least, you deny the EXP. I think that's still something. It's still not ideal, but it's still something to be glad about. Dogfight's going to rotate into the mid lane now and perhaps try to dish out some harassment towards blood, but 
He's got that level 2 Dragon's Blood available now, so it's not really going to be too threatened by anyone, for that matter, on the side of IG. Emo does have the Electric vo Vortex, but... It's not going to be enough lockdown to take down this DK, so Dogfights is eventually just going to rotate out of the lane. Not to mention, he is a level 2 Pangolier. There's only so much he can do with level 1 Squashbuckle and the, uh, the Lucky Shot. It does feel like KG Luminous are just getting more right now in this early game. Being said, we definitely are. I mean, last hits are favoring the Morphling and the Storm as it stands. The DP is still doing a pretty good job. Now the Lashrak moves in forward, gets Shackwood up immediately. Dogfights was just waiting there and they're just going to burst him down. That's, uh, I mean, we saw how strange Ollie died last time. This is equally kind of just a strange way to die but you know ig will take it and dogfights again being very active early on with his support tank where he is going back mid um what's he waiting for here yeah, i don't know if you really have kill potential with a level five storm and a level two pango but he is just kind of uh scouting around i guess oh, he's sticking around Gonna move back down to the bot lane now, but perhaps just not wanting to soak too much XP off his own cause. Still, this is one of those heroes that does require pretty heavily on uh, on levels. So he's gonna set up for those bounty runes down at the bot lane now, trying to snag them off the side of KG Luminous. He will move forward with the less rack. Dog fights needs about two seconds though. He is just gonna swashbuckle away. Not willing to give up his life for that banner rune. That's perfectly fine. So a two for two trade on the bounties. And again, we do have a bit of a bit of a farm game going on between these two. Just waiting for those levels and the farm to be up and running before they do actually go in for, for some real kill potential. Yeah, that is the tendency with these kinds of drafts as well. Look down mid, we already see a, a lot of action coming out from Emo. Yeah, he's going to jump on Blood, but don't forget, he's very tanky. There's the lucky shot with the swashbuckle kicking in, but Blood still has a lot of HP. Emo going to jump in again. He still has mana, and he will find the kill. Well, I suppose there you have it. As soon as he hits level 6, I guess that's what Dogfights was waiting for. And they do make a nice kill happen because of it. Yeah, and already Emo again working that lane out to his favor. 31 to 5 compared to the 24 to 4 of the DK, and he is finding a lot more. You don't usually see Storms with that good of a start, but he is kind of setting himself up for a pretty decent snowball as we go in in this laning phase, of course. At top lane as well, Erica again having a pretty good time, and... Yeah, they'll lose the left rack. Yeah, he'll just essentially have the shackles out on the left rack, and he just adaptive strikes him to death. Oh, but now Xiao Fu gonna jump in, but the strength morph is there. <laughs> It's not very easy to kill off the Morphling without some kind of silence or stun. And he'll just get away. He'll go to the shrine with the rest of his team, and they'll shrine up. Gonna make it a 3-2, to two, but again, you've just got to be worried about the uh, the farm that's going on here for the sign of IG. It just seems like they're getting way too much. Now, you could make the argument that Erika is doing just the same on the Death Prophet, but I don't see the same sort of impact when the Death Prophets have that kind of amount of farm in comparison to, say, a Morphling and Storm. I think it pays off in the short term much more, but whether or not they actually get that momentum. They force out a stampede from the centaur. Meanwhile, mid lane, they lose the left rack again, though. Ollie does go down. Emo thinking about going after blood. The blood is just way too healthy on the DK, and there's just not enough mana on Emo. But you still, again, got to be very happy about that left rack kill. Meanwhile, top lane, JT being forced to TP out, but he will go down before he can. And the Exorcism has just been popped as well, so they will go ahead and do some chip damage to this T1 tower, perhaps even just take it. Yeah, again, this is a really good use of that Exorcism, first one of the game. And it's a key thing with the DP. You want to be around the tower when you pop it, you want to be able to take out the tower, secure an objective, get that gold flowing for your team, and it looks like Erica will be able to do that, and already that's a pretty good way to start off for KGL. Granted, again, they lost a bit there in these trades, but you are starting to see that power spike come in for the heroes on KGL. 
A nice deny attempt there from Dogfights, but he just wasn't quite there. Still a 4-4, four four, slight net worth lead to the side of KG. IG definitely going to be playing the slower game. Again, they do have the Morph and the Storm, both of which require a lot of time to come online. Really about what KG Luminous plans to do. and You'd imagine, as soon as that Exorcism is back up again, you'd imagine they just group up and go for another T1 tower. Pretty certain they do. Like, that is the one spell they have to play around to cool down with. Maybe the DK Dragon form as well, but it's not as pertinent as that Exorcism and Erica should be rotating around fairly soon. Just less than a minute left. So right after clearing out this jungle, maybe we we'll make their way down mid. It's going to be the third kill going to the Morphling now. Shackles into just right clicks. Jiafu gets caught out and you can't underestimate even that damage output this early on from a Morphling. Especially when he's just max Agi, Agi morphed and... That's three kills already going to a safe lane morph. I mean, it just doesn't seem the, like the usual kind of thing we see, John, but it's happening. It really is, and it's already paying dividends off for IG again. That morphling right behind the DP in terms of last hits and in terms of net worth as well, just about 300 gold, behi 300 gold behind. Jiao Fu misses the power strike on Ollie, and that would have been a very easy pickoff. I'm not really sure what's going on here from KG. They've made a few little errors like that, and with this kind of draft, it does cost you, right? Because every kill really sets a nice momentum for your side, but losing them like that and giving more kills to the Morphling, it looks like, soon if they're not careful, definitely not going to work out in their favor. Stupendous. Top lane, Erica gonna get jumped, Emo makes the rotation with JT, though they do have the Oracle coming in, but he doesn't have level 6 yet, and that means no false promise comes out. Blood will try to push in that mid tower in the dragon form while he can, but Dogfights is gonna be there, and luckily for Dogfights, he is level 6, so if he wishes to go in with the Rolling Thunder, he can do so, and it looks like he will. Blunt, gonna be careful about this because here comes the Morphling as well. He'll morph into the TK, and with that, can they hold him down long enough? It looks like they just might. There is a split Earth coming out. It does actually get cancelled off, and that may have been enough time for Blood to walk out of here. So the tanky DK does survive for another day. He will not be able to finish off that T1 mid tower, though. Yeah, and that was really unfortunate as well. He couldn't contest couldn't fight back because his dragon form just ended when that initiation did happen from IG so not being able to get that counter as well but he does transition into that jungle he's gonna regen just fine again with dragon blood kicking in and his dragon form is gonna be up in 13 seconds so when that's up again he's gonna do that last bits of damage onto that tier two tier one mid and whether or not IG does respond to that is gonna be interesting to see again that uh, tier 1 mid does provide a lot of control for either side. IG again gonna go straight up to the top lane. Straight after Erika on that DP who once again is kind of by herself. They will rotate down Zhao Fu. Now the Spirit Siphons bring Erika all the way back up to full HP. And Dogfights will end up losing his life. That was uh, I mean I thought they would have found that. Um, unfortunately JT he didn't have the Stampede available. So he couldn't really close the distance as the Centaur. And it does end up costing them in the end. They will still push out that bot T1 towel though. Ollie, he commits the Serpent Wards. Blood will rotate in with the Leshrac. They cannot get the deny off, however. And so they do find a mid T1 towel. They will lose their bot T1. And it's still just remaining to be a very even game, it seems. Definitely does. Again, uh, about a 1k network lead for IG. 6 to 5 at 12 minutes in. Fairly moderate pace and both teams really just kind of trading for the most part again. It does feel like it has been a while since we saw the Exorcism used. You kind of want to see that coming out from Erica, Just not in position, not in the lane to make use of it. You probably want to use it down bot now as well. But again, they are letting this DP really farm up first before making any sort of big move. Farm up Erica will. Does pick up a Yule Scepter now. Still, I'm waiting for that big group up. 
from the side of KG into a push. Haven't really seen that quite yet. They do have a Sanking Blink Dagger up now though, so Zhao Fu does have the initiation that his team was lacking. They have a smoke ready to go. It does look like they do on the Oracle. Everything's pretty much up and they will go for it. But the line has been drawn down towards that bot lane. Of course, the T1 Tower is still standing as well. So if you can find a pick off, it'll be a fairly easy target for the side of KG Luminous to take. That Morphling would be very nice had they walked towards the east side of their own jungle, but they do walk past. Looks like they are even thinking about rotating through mid lane where they do see the Storm Spirit now. They do have the level 1 silence. They do jump in. They, can they do the damage? It looks like they can. Emo will end up falling there. They'll lose the Leshrac in the process. And now Erika going after dogfights. They'll find that kill as well. That's exactly what they wanted. They might even go for more. They found the Hex. Ollie. Well, I thought he was... Uh, <laughs> thought he might have been able to take down that Sanking quick enough, but... It was wishful thinking, IG do get punished rather heavily, but the only thing is, they don't seem to be pushing on the side of KG Luminous, rather they will go back up to the top lane and try to defend, they'll go after JT on that Centaur, Split Earth not coming out yet, he'll pop the Edict, though Stampede and TP way is going to be the play from JT, and because they use that Burrow Strike, oh, the TP was way longer than I expected, JT, going to get caught out in the end anyway, a nice Split Earth coming out from the Leshrac. Bit unlucky there for JT, it was just such a long TP. He does get punished in the end. Yeah, he was very close to just getting out of there pretty safely, but I believe that was 0.5 left or 0 0.05 left. And he yeah, just that sliver of time that the channel needed wasn't there. Rather unfortunate, but again, it is what it is. At the very least, while all of that is happening for us, your Morphling is pretty safe, farming up quite nicely. Should have the Lincolns up in about 500 gold, maybe 400 gold now at this point. So that timing is going to be very decent in this morph. And with that, it's going to be much harder to control this hero. We'll get dogfights in the mid lane. Blood showing off his Shadow Blade for the first time. Make it a 7 to 10 now. IG, got to be careful not to get caught out down to the bot lane, though Jean Fu already commit the Burrow Strike, and Oli now knows to back the hell out of there. Looks like he's trying to set himself up for that Serpent Ward drop on the T2 tower later on, but that'll be a long wait. In fact, he's got no TP now, so he's kind of stuck in that tree line. As soon as he walks out, he may just end up dying. The Leshrac is going to stick around. No, they're going to go for a kill attempt here. They stuck around for this moment. They know he's left alone. And with that, a very easy kill coming out for the Morphling. Meanwhile, mid lane blood. He will get started on that central JT. The Baron Strength will come out from Zhao Fu as well. Rolling Thunder will not do the work required. So IG will end up losing JT on the Centaur. And that opens up that mid tier 2 tower now. Blood will get started immediately on that. Yeah, and they don't even need to expend the Exorcism for this one. They have the Dragon form up. That's probably going to do the job. They can save that Exo for high ground. They can save it for another team fight. Maybe a Tier 2 tower up top. Or maybe that Tier 2 down bot after they take out that Tier 1. So they still have that tool in their disposal. The one thing is that, again, IG is allowing their Morphling to farm up quite nicely. Is that going to be enough? We'll find out soon enough, I guess. But... He does have that Lincoln at 17 minutes in, along with his power treads and two rate bands. Just feels like this Morphling's been allowed to do whatever he wants this game. Every time you see him, he's just right clicking people to death. They're gonna go after him now, Blood. We'll close the distance with that Shadow Blade. Can't stun him up because of the Lincoln Sphere though. <laughs> you see Xiao Fu, he doesn't even bother with the Burrow Strike. He just says, screw it. Let's just go back. Don't even bother with this man. And now Blood is smoke tower. may end up dying, they jump in, there's the morph into the stun and now the split earth comes out but it won't be enough. Emo jumps in with the storm and that'll be the fifth kill now coming out for the morphling. Emo looking for more, he finds the Leshrac and the Leshrac will pay dearly. 
With that, they might just rotate into that tier 2 bot tower, though no, they might even find more. Zhao Fu, he's stuck around. JT closing the gap, just looping around. He has a Blink Dagger available, but just doesn't feel comfortable jumping in onto that Shrine, or maybe they do. The Shrine has been popped now. Zhao Fu forced to back out. KG Luminous thinking about going for this team fight. They don't really want to allow this bot tier 2 to go down. And IG, they may actually just back out. I guess there's no real reason to risk it at this point. You understand you have the better late game. Not only that, like, all of the spells on Keen Game and Luminous are up. The Exorcism is still up. The Dragon Form is back up. The Epicenter is up. So you have all these tools for big team fight. whereas IG, again, isn't that great with big team fights. Um, when it comes down to a 5v5, you have much more control. Coming out from KGL, they will be able to take this uh, tier 1 down bot at the very least. Oh, Silence comes out. Rolling Thunder didn't come out in time. Now, they root him in place as well. There's the Yules. They're just stopping him from throwing out that ultimate, though. He still swashbuckles out somehow. Dogfights. Rolling Thunder comes out, and he's going to try and roll his way out of this one. And it looks like he will be successful in doing so. He'll go for the TP <laughs> mid-roll, and he'll be okay. This will open up that mid-T1 tower for the side of IG now. KGL, they'll be able to take that bot T1, but they just seems like they just got played, honestly. It does feel that way. Again, they still have their spell spells up for the tier 2 if they ought to uh, opt to expend it for that objective. But looks like they will just, yeah, they throw, they throw out the dragon form at the very least. So they should be able to do a lot of damage onto this tier 2. Well, they have the Aghanim Scepter now up on Erika as well, which will help the cause. It feels like they've held on to this exorcism for so long though. I'm not sure how, how worthwhile it is. To just keep holding on to it. Like, the T2 now just gets denied off because Dog Clients just literally walks in and denies it. So there's a bunch of gold <laughs> that you don't get. It's a bit surprising. Like, KJ Luminous had the tools they needed to really take that tower. They play it a bit too safe and end up losing on a nice gold injection. While all that happens, they lose their top tier 2 as well. So, a bit of an odd trade, to say the least. Again, 10 to 11, 21 minutes in now. KGL just feeling comfortable to keep farming up against this draft of IG, but I mean, you look at Emo, he's got the Orchid up now. The Morphling going straight into the Ethereal Blade next. He's getting pretty close to it as well. He can afford the Eagle Song. There will be a smoke from IG. They want to try and find another target. Blood will show himself bot lane, and they know he's by himself. So this should be a very easy pick here for IG. And they, well, they'll start off with the Hoop Stomp. They'll zip in as well. Can they finish him off fast enough, though? It looks like they should be able to, but they don't have detection for him. He does get the False Promise as well, so he'll survive just a little bit longer. They're still trying to dish the damage out. Swashbuckle on the outside, but it looks like Blood will survive, and they're going to try and turn this one around. Dogfights will end up going down on the Pangolier. They're chasing for even more now. They won't find anything else. I've got to say, I'm somewhat surprised that they couldn't kill off Blood on that DK. Wow, it's it still a DK in the end, right? Mid lane, Leshrak will end up going down Emo. He just jumps in. Ollie was there as well. They claim an easy kill. Now Erika thinking about going after the Storm, but doesn't have the Silence available. So has to give up on that one. Yeah, but, you know, getting that jump on the DK at this point in game, it's, it's not like you have any way of eating through that armor just yet. You have good magic damage on that storm, it's not the most amazing burst, so it really was a bit keen trying to go for that kill in blood. I think the one thing was that you forced that fight under a TP point as well, so the response was there from KGL, and you have to respect that response, because again, they have a lot of sustain, they have that oracle that helps them stay alive, and if you fail to respect that, then these gank will just never work in your favor. Another smoke coming out from IG, though this time around they won't waste their time with heroes, but rather the Roshan. Only problem is they get scouted out immediately by the scan. 
They will also counter scan and find Zhao Fu, though. Zhao Fu's already jumped in. Now the silence is there immediately from Erika. It's a very nice one at that. Can they take down Emo? It looks like the Burrow Strike will hold him down long enough, but now they jump back in. Rolling Thunder is there from Dogfights. It's two down already for the side of KG. They do buy back though. That's a third. He goes down as well. Now the Leshrac losing too much HP. He's probably going to end up losing his life though. No, everyone ignores him. They finally end up getting him. They'll leave the DK alone. They go back into the Roshan pit. Though Zhao Fu once again going in for the Burrow Strike. Oli gets the shackles off. Though the silence comes in from Erika who just fought back on the DP. They end up taking out the Pango though. He buys back as well. Now Emo jumps in and gets Zhao Fu. The Aegis will be clear by the Morphling in the end and now KG Luminous don't want this team fight any longer. Look how much work this Morphling is doing as the Sand King. They'll end up getting the Aegis though, the Purifying Flames. Ends up getting the job done. He didn't Strength Morph at the right time. Erika though, can't afford to die back like this. They've lost the Oracle. It looks like they've lost the DP as well. She doesn't even have any Spirit Siphons left. She'll use up to try and avoid that damage. In fact, she'll survive somehow, but not long enough. The Morphling just jumps in and takes her out. Now the Blood comes in, in the back lines as the DK. They're still fighting somehow, but he is surrounded and he's dead. That is four heroes down with no buyback. This could be a full team wipe as well. How many heroes? must die before they learn their lesson, John. KG Luminous just threw 10 heroes at IG, and IG just opened their hands and said, thank you very much. <laughs> that was wild. I, I don't think we've ever seen anything like that before. Just all buybacks coming out, and none of them paying off. In the end, so that was what? One buyback, two, three, four, yeah, five buybacks. All, all in all. And, um, well, from the dark side, it looks like they did expand three, just three. So that was eight kills, I think, over the course of that fight, and it didn't pay off. Um, that just means you managed to take that Aegis, but we're at the point with the Morphling that the shotgun's up and ready to go. He's going to have a BKB very fast as well, so he's going to really not even care about the DP at some point. And it, it just gets worrisome here. You don't have the best response for the morph anymore you had that great early advantage that you didn't quite capitalize on and now you're stuck between a rock and a hard place you have to defend your high ground but you really want to get that push going with this kind of lineup and you kind of missed your window certainly so it does seem to be the case blood moving forward in that shadow blade again trying to find a target but doesn't really find one. They'll go for a smoke instead. But KG Luminous, if they lose this team fight, it could really cost them a lot. Can you look at that buyback status? Nobody has it on the side of KG. I mean, apart from the Leshrac, but that is just a Leshrac. In fact, now he doesn't even have it. He doesn't even have the gold <laughs> for it. Oh, it's, it's a really, really tight match. Um, we are still 20 to 15, 11k net worth advantage for IG. And taking a look at Dota Plus, Mike, just taking a quick peek, 93% the way of IG now. My goodness. So, it is pretty much in their favor, for sure. I mean, again, KG has kind of missed their timing. They still have a way to get back into this game, of course. It just requires them to play absolutely perfectly. And whether, whether or not they can get that perfect initiation into a good tower push is one question. It's just all these fights are, are happening very far away from objectives they'd like to take. Double damage being picked up on the Morphling now. That is a, another real blessing for the side of IG. And it looks like they want to initiate with that. JT going to jump on Erika. That's going to be disastrous. Although no false promise. It was there in time. They're going for more though. Look at that rolling thunder from Dogfights. Just going through everybody. They're going to get Zhao Fu on the Sand King. Blood trying to take down this Morphling. But Morphling's just ignoring him completely. Leshrek goes down as well. Eric is still alive throughout all this. They're going to try and use that silence to their advantage. You know, JT jumps in. Gets the hoof stomp off. Oh. It's a full team wipe. And there's the GG call. <laughs> They've had enough. And I don't blame you, John. That, that was a really good showing from IG. What looked like a decent start for K KGL just doesn't transpire in that mid game. And again, they gave so much space to Morphling to farm up. They had no response for it at this point. And unfortunately, that means KGL is out of the tournament, Mike.